Easy, baby. Easy, baby. Can't believe. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing fantastic. Um, happy New Year. I hope you guys are all doing great. I hope you guys had a great Christmas, a great New Year, and I hope 2013 is filled with everything that you're looking for. Um, so I just wanted to come and make this video. And this video mainly is for the younger Ghanaian females out there who have not experimented with this yet. Or just generally the younger um, African females out there who have not experimented with this yet but have very African parents, okay? And I call this the boyfriend situation. And if I can save you guys what I learned the hard way, I would love to. So just, just listen and understand what I am about to say. Guinean parents can be very tricksy. My Guinean parents are very tricksy, okay? My Guinean parents will ask you a question in a certain way to trap your ass, <laughs> okay? And this is the question that we're discussing today. Eh, so Linda, who is your boyfriend? Not, do you have a boyfriend? Do you like anyone? Oh, Linda, so who is your boyfriend? So they use the approach of assumption that you have a man and you're just not telling them. <laughs> who is your boyfriend? And they say it smiling, saying, who is your boyfriend? Who, who is your boyfriend? Who is your boyfriend? Who, who is your boyfriend? Who is your boyfriend? Who, who is your boyfriend? Hey, who is your boyfriend? They would even do a duet to that dance. Who is your boyfriend? Hey, who is your boyfriend? Hey, who is your boyfriend? Hey, who is your boyfriend? Kinky, 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 kinky. Who is your boyfriend? Hey. They make a song out of it, okay? Smiling, smiling, shining all 32, just cheesing hard, okay? Like they really want to know. And you're like, ah. And you're just so happy and you're just dancing along like, ah, you want to know it. I want to tell you, hey, I like this boy at school. Hey, my friends, hey. Hmm, don't tell them anything. They will stone you, eh? If you don't take my advice, take it. If you don't take my advice, go, let them stone you. I'm telling you now, once, finish. If you want to go, continue. Who is your boyfriend? Be dancing, dancing, and smiling, smiling, shining all that to do with them. Go ahead, uh, if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want them to stone you, don't go and be smiling, smiling, telling everything. Hey, don't tell them anything, okay? Unless this person has proposed to you, unless this person is ready to marry you, unless you are in an engagement bliss, and this red person is ready to marry you, don't tell them. They don't want to know. And the thing is, it doesn't even matter how old you are. You could be like 20, could be 35, you could be 48, and they will still stone you. And if you're 16, then you've already been stoned for something else because you know that's unacceptable in any Ghanaian household, okay? That's why I don't see no Ghanaians on 16 and pregnant. And it's really sad and it's really unfortunate, I think, because I don't know, it's, it's almost like they want you to lie to them because basically you're hiding the fact that you're in this relationship with someone. Um, and so it's so contradictory because they don't want you to lie to them, but they don't want you to tell you unless you're going to marry the person. And it's not like you just meet someone and all of a sudden you're married to the person. It just doesn't work that way. There's a transition phase. They just don't want to know about it, which is unfortunate. Um, but if my kids ever came to me and told me, I'd be ecstatic. I would be happy. I mean, somewhat fearful because people are just on some crazy level these days. But I'd be happy because at least I'd know what was going on. Um, I'd be aware of where my kids were at whatever point in time. Blase, blase. For the most part. I just... It just would make sense to tell them, right? But from, I guess, a Ganyan point of view, no. They don't want to know. 
because they really don't want to know unless you're ready to marry this person. So, when they ask, who is your boyfriend? Who is your boyfriend? Hey, who is your boyfriend? They start playing drums. Who is your boyfriend? Don't tell them. They don't want to know. You will just receive one hot slap. In fact, you receive hot slap and extra grounding for the rest of your life. They don't want to know. They just don't want you to have a boyfriend. There's no such thing as a boyfriend. You're just single and then you're married. You're single, then you're married. That's that's it. There's no transition phase. And like, I don't know. I don't know how they expect it to happen. I don't know how they expect you to meet the person. All I know is you're single, then you're married. Then 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 you're married. That's just how they see it. So... Hopefully this helps you avoid a stoning because they will kill you. They will kill you, okay? I really, um, I think that it's so important for Ghanaian parents or African parents to open up the lines of communications with their children because their safety in family. Um, I mean, I know the Guineans are so family oriented. Uncles, just we're just so family oriented. That's what we do. We have big families. We have aunties, uncles, cousins for days. Like we love family, and there is safety in family. When you meet somebody and you bring them home and you show your parents, you know what? This is the person that I'm talking to. This is the person that I'm getting to know. There is safety in that. That guy is going to be a lot less likely to mess with you because he's met your family because you've got to be accountable he has somebody to answer to but when there's no family it's kind of like you know we just playing games we just playing games and if he's scared off the bat he can just run off he doesn't want to deal with the whole family situation that you know from the get what you're dealing with but I don't know. I, I think that Ghanaian parents need to open up their lines of communication. And I think as another generation, that we need to not make that same mistake with our kids. I think that we need to be open and more open with our kids. Um, I don't have any kids, so I don't know where it's my place to say this. But when I do have kids, I'm definitely going to be really open with them. And I would want them to come to me and say, you know what, this is the person that I'm talking to. This is the person that I'm seeing. Like, this is what it is. I would appreciate that. Um, and I would feel it far more honest. And I'd like to meet the person and hold him to a standard. Okay? Because men are on some next tip these days. Things have changed. Things are not the way that they used to be. Maybe that's what our parents think. Maybe the way that they used to be. But there were some bad breed ones back in the day too. Don't get me wrong. But um, maybe they just don't get the pool that we deal with this day and age and so um, I think that there's a lot of accountability when there's family present and when they know that they have a standard to live up to you. Just saying. I mean at the same time I'm not saying just like bring any old person home. No. Don't just be meeting somebody and be like hey come meet my parents. <laughs> no like relax yourself one time. Like not everyone can be your boyfriend. <laughs> like. <laughs> Some girls just get infatuated a little too easily, like hold the phone, okay? You just can't be like bumping into people and be like, hey, <gasps> like relax, relax. Like I feel like, I don't know, some of my girlfriends think I'm like a lesbian or something because I just don't gaga over guys. Like, you know when you're young, you're like, oh my god, oh yeah, he's so cute. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, he's good looking. And he could be like the most ratchet individual in the whole world. Like, looks just don't mean anything, to be honest. I mean, yeah, it's great if the person's good looking and there, but there was just some deal breakers for me. Some things like that just, you just lose the plot off the bat. Just some things, if you do these things, you just lose the plot with me. And that's the end of the story. Beginning to end in a span of like two minutes. Story done. Book closed. Done. That's just me. But I think it's because of 
the men that I have in my life, like my dad and my brother are two of the most amazing men. I know I'm slightly biased, but they're two of the most amazing men. My dad is very methodical, he's very logical, he's very fair, he's very, I don't know, he's just, he's just awesome. And my brother, oh, my brother is the, the fairest person I've ever met. My brother's only 15, but he's going to be an amazing man. Um, and I really wish that for him, and I pray for him that he becomes the man that God has um, really set aside for him to be. Because I've never met anyone so fair, and even in the face of adversity, he is just such a fair person. Um, he's just so level-headed and he's so grown for his age, so mature for his age. And so when it comes to like, when I meet guys and stuff and they're just not at a level, like it's kind of like, yo, like my 15-year-old brother is at this level and right now you're not doing so good. Like, you know, like they really have a standard to live up to. And so I just don't tolerate a lot anymore when it comes to guys. Like I just... It's nothing to me. I just kind of know that you're not it for me, kind of thing. You know, if you're coming in to mess around with me, if you're coming with bad intentions, my father will stop you at the gate. Like, point blank, stop you at the gate. There's no way you're gonna come with some nonsense to deal with his daughter. It's not gonna happen that way. And that's what I'm saying, there's protection in family. Like, my dad does not play that mess. He does not. Um, and so, I mean, like, he's a lot, my dad's a lot more open to it than my mom is. My mom would just, like, freak out, like, what the hell? And then on top of the fact that the guy wasn't even Kenyan, like, my mom would extra freak out and, like, we, <laughs> but, um, no, my dad, um, is actually really, really cool and calm, but he does not take any mess from anyone, especially when it comes to his daughters. Like, my dad's favorite word is, like, swine like that. Like, you are a swine. You are coming to Come in to talk to my daughter. You are a swine. Swine like that. Who do you think you are? Swine. Stop at the gates. Don't enter. I mean, don't just be bringing anybody home. This is not what I'm trying to say. No. But if you have met this person and you've discerned and you feel as though this is someone that you want to get to know and this is something that might lead to a future, let you know it's I wish the parentals were open to knowing who this person is um, and getting to know them alongside with you and trust your judgment enough to get to know them alongside with you and if it doesn't work out hey it doesn't work out Kenyan parents don't crucify your children ah that's why eh? is it by force <laughs> And this is not to say lie to your parents, don't tell your parents anything. Please, please, please don't even go there, okay? Because the last thing I want is for some Ghanaian parents to come and attack me and say, Hey, Linda Bwedi, so this is how you are. You are teaching my children to lie to me. Aden, eh? Aden, kwasa sembeni, eh? I don't want any problem. I don't want problem at all, at all. All I'm saying is there comes a point in time where Parents and children need to learn how to start growing together. And Guinean parent-children combinations aren't really the greatest at this um, from my experience. I mean, I guess they're getting better because I know some girlfriends that, you know, you know, the parents know that they have a boyfriend or whatever and that's cool and everything. But, you know, it's, it's you know, growing pains. All I'm saying is that I feel as though you know, Guinean parents should be more open to hearing these things and embracing these things because it's a part of growing up. I mean, there is something that happens in between, you know, being single and being married. You need to get to know somebody before you decide to marry them. Um, but at the same time as children, I think that we need to, you know, be willing to get stoned once in a while. Um, you know, just to kind of break them in. Sometimes you gotta break them in. Break them in, you know? I mean, I noticed that, like, there's stuff that my sister gets away with, my younger sister gets away with, that I could never dream of getting away with because my parents have been broken in. Somewhat. <laughs> but I don't think they'll ever get past the whole um, boyfriend situation. They're not past the whole boyfriend situation. There's me, my sister, and then my younger brother. So, like, I don't know. We'll see. When my sister 
pulls this, then we'll see how this all goes down. We'll see if they're truly broken in. But when it comes to me, I don't think they'll ever be broken in. But I think it's up to me to push it a little bit to kind of just like, just push it a little bit and just be like, hey, so, um, you know, so I'm seeing this guy, right? And, you know, he's kind of cool, right? And, you know, I think he's like, you know, really like, you know, I want to be able to have a conversation with my father about like this dude that I'm seeing or if I'm seeing somebody, which is not the case now, but I'm going to try this. If I end up seeing someone, I'm going to try this. And I'm gonna let you guys how know how it goes. And if you don't see me again, then you know that I've been stoned. Um, but basically, yeah, that's my two cents and a dollar for today. I hope you guys um, enjoyed it. And if you guys have any feedback, let me know. If you guys have tried this, experienced it, and have been stoned, and you have battle scars to prove it, comment below and let me know how your experience was. Um, if you guys understand a bit more, if you're older and you understand a bit more why this is, or maybe I just don't understand it fully, let me know, because I would re I really, really like to know what is really up with this whole situation, because it's the strangest thing to me, and I think that's part of the, the whole thing about growing up here, is that I feel like I live in between two different worlds. Like, I'm, I'm living the Oreo lifestyle. But I'm still really connected to my culture, but not so much in some ways. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your experiences have been. Um, let me know what your thoughts and feelings are about this. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.